Okay, welcome uh, to the Sutta study class. Um, as you know, um, uh, we are doing live stream today um, from uh, Mississauga Temple. I inform you that this class is going to be held through live stream. And uh, as you know, this is a good experience for all of us to see how this works uh, in the future. So today, uh, to begin the class, we go with the uh, recitation. Um, today's uh, class is going to be uh, uh, only a discussion. I don't know how to, um, you know, go with the meditation part as we have been doing it with full of attention. But anyhow, let's begin the class with uh, recitation. Namo tassa. You don't need to request precepts today to begin the class. <clears throat> Namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the sublime one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Homage to the sublime one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Homage to the sublime one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Iti piso bhagava arhaṃ sammā sambuddho vijjā charana sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisa dhamma sārati sattha deva manusānaṃ buddho bhagavāti such indeed is the sublime one, worthy, perfectly enlightened, perfect in true knowledge and conduct, well gone, knower of the worlds, supreme trainer of persons to be tame, teacher of gods and human, enlightened and exalted. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko ehi pasiko, openaiko, pachatang veditabo vinyo hiti. Well expounded is the Dhamma by the sublime one, directly visible, unaffected by time, calling one to come and see, leading onwards to be realized by the wise. Supati Panno Bhagavato Savak Sango Ujupati Panno Bhagavato Savak Sango Nyaya Pati Panno Bhagavato Savak Sango Sami Chipati Panno Bhagavato Savak Sango Yadidang Chattari Purisa Yugani Atta Purisa Pugala Esa Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakineyo Anjali Karaniyo Anuttarang Punyaket the order of the sublime ones disciples is practicing well. The order of the sublime ones disciple is of upright conduct. The order of the sublime ones disciples has entered the right path. The order of the sublime ones disciples is practicing correctly. That is, the four pairs of persons the eight kinds of individuals. This order of the sublime one's disciples is worthy of offerings and hospitality, worthy of gifts and salutation, supreme fields of merits for the world. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 
okay friends that's the uh, end of uh, the recitation and now we would like to begin today's uh, discussion of anapa of the anapanasati discourse um, we are going to start the discussion from where we stopped last week as you know we have been spending uh, three weeks to discuss the background of anapanasati uh, and uh, what uh, what are the other factors that we need to consider of anapanasati so we have been discussing uh, all of these important factors of anapanasati throughout last three week this week is the last week we spend for discussing uh, the particular discourse very important discourse anapanasati uh, today we uh, we are going to discuss the 30 Two or sixteen stages of anapanasati, as you see in the on the screen. Uh, uh, actually, we covered uh, those single step, and uh, when we make a uh, couple those sixteen steps last week. But it is important to go through them again in order to understand how these anapanasati stages uh, are going to develop a foundation of mindfulness. and other respective spiritual qualities until one attains nibbana i think you can see on the screen uh, these uh, 16 or uh, oh, 32 stages of anapanasati uh, the first one is breathing in long he understand i breathe in in long breathing out uh, uh, long he understand i breathe out long uh, we <clears throat> discuss this part last week as well as the next part the breathing in short he understand i breathe in short breathing in short uh breathing out short he understand i breathe out in short so here we stress last week that understand is important because uh, at this stage the meditator on anapanasati truly consider what this breath is and how this breath happens we discuss thoroughly that uh, the meditator do not uh, does not want to uh, breathe uh, purposely because it is a natural occurrence in our life in our body so it happens in its own way what the meditator does in this meditation just focus attention somewhere the meditator easily can focus the breath and understand it so you can see that happens in the first uh, four stages so he or the she whoever uh, this this meditation is been taken uh, understand the breath as it is that's what happened in the four uh, stages here so after some time uh in the during the meditation the meditator is able to uh switch his focus into a very uh refined state i would call that a uh, refined state because you have understood the breath uh, whether it is long or short or in breath or out breath thoroughly in order to experience something that's why we call he trains thus i breathe in sensitive to the entire body he trains thus i breathe out in a sensitive to uh, the entire body so at this stage the meditator is uh, very uh, mindful about what breath is therefore he is sensitive to his body uh, the commentary the commentary say that Uh, the entire body is uh, the breath body which means both in breath and out breath and some say that it is both the uh, cycle of in breath and out breath as well as the physical body in my point of view it's okay to take both because uh, you feel your body uh, accurately uh, mindfully at this stage so therefore Uh, it is okay to say that you are mindful about your physical body as well so at this stage he trains uh he trains something uh, while he he or, he or she is uh, 
becoming sensitive to the entire body. That is one important thing to consider. At this stage, your prominent focus is uh, to the, uh, is the both breath or the entire body, physical body. It means that your concentration, mindfulness, as well as wisdom has uh, have been arisen into certain extent. That's why training, the word training is there. In Pali, we used uh, Sikkati. Sikkati means you develop uh, the morality, concentration and wisdom. Uh, so morality, concentration and wisdom are the three main pillars that all of us to uh, develop to attain enlightenment. So when the meditator comes to this level of Anapanasati meditation, he or she has to train his mind, which means by looking at the breath and by becoming sensitive to the breath as well as the body, he trained his mind in moral principles, concentration and wisdom. So that part is there that he uh, to understand. He trains thus, I breathe in calming down bodily uh, formation or fabrication. He trains thus, I breathe out calming down bodily formation or fabrication. So little bit further, uh, the meditator goes on uh, in the in the Anapanasati concentration. Now the meditator understand bodily formation in a philosophical sense. We know that the bodily formation is not anything else but the breath. So you at this stage realize that bodily formation, the breath, is conditioned by so many things such as the, bre uh, the, the physical body, the heart, the lungs, as well as uh, your, uh, you know, four elements and uh, the lifespan. Because of all these things, the breath is manifested. Otherwise, there is no breathing happens to a table, to a other, uh, any, uh, you know, dead uh, tree or anything else. So this physical body is conditioned by the breath, therefore it is called bodily formation. Now your mind is training slowly, uh, firmly on these facts. That's what happened in the four uh, you know, stages when we couple single stages. Uh, so this, as we discussed last week, consists of the four foundations of mindfulness. Before going to discuss uh, how Anapanasati stages develop for foundation of mindfulness, I would like to go on to other steps as well. Um, when the meditator is training his mind with the breath, uh, slowly it becomes uh, calm and peaceful. Uh, after the four uh, stages or eight st single stages, the meditator's attention goes on to a different, uh, you know, facts. That is rapture. You can see on the screen that uh, he trained his mind while breathing happens uh, to understand rapture, the very feelings that his body, his mind has. So he trains thus, I breathe in experiencing rapture. He trains thus, I breathe out experiencing rapture. So rapture is a quality of mind which uh, which arisen which is arisen due to constant practice on breath. So in the in the earlier stages you saw how you focus and what for what you focus that's long in breath and out breath short in breath and out breath then uh, uh, you become sensitive to both in breath and out breath then slowly you calm down this uh, breath, uh, which we call bodily fabrication. As a result of this uh, strong, constant practice, your mind relax. That's why you experience it and we call it technically rapture. Uh, in a simple words, you are happy now you, because your body, your breath has uh, calmed down into a certain uh, extent that as a result, Rapture has arisen in the mind and you train it. You train your mind. It is important thing to know here is that what you train. In each steps it says you train thus. You train thus. 
what you trade is your mind your mental states and also uh, the uh, uh, successive qualities uh, in anapan sati so that's uh, need to be understood clearly so here we experience rapture while in breath and out breath takes place so the meditator continues the meditation because it's now at this stage the meditation is so refreshing entertaining enjoying you don't feel any pain you don't feel any disturbances and your mind is elated and you are so happy that's why you are going forward rapture is not coming when there is pain rapture is not coming when there are disturbances rapture is not appearing in your mind if meditation doesn't work on the other hand rapture is there because you have done a great job you go further he trains thus i breathe in experience in pleasure he trains thus i breathe out experience in pleasure so rapture is the quality of your mind uh, and then you realize that your mind is centered and concentrated and uh, exists in a happy state then you feel it through your body as well so you feel your body is so light so uh peaceful no uh, tight muscles and uh, pain any uh, on the neck or on the hip or anywhere in the body and it's just like uh, uh, you know clouds that flows on the in the sky it's so light that's the simple word that we can explain so you experience both rapture and pleasure at this stage which means your prominent focus is both rapture and pleasure so we call it uh, piti sukha piti sukha uh, or rapture and pleasure are uh, enlightenment factors as well so now you are in a very uh, uh, good state where you experience jnana samadhi let's go further on anapanasati stages uh, he trains thus i breathe in experiencing mental fabrication he uh, he trains that i breathe out experiencing mental fabrication so during in and out breathing uh, the meditator experience uh, mental fabrication we need to understand this as well mental fabrication are not anything else the feeling and uh, sensation you have now what kind of feeling and sensation sensation you have now is rapture and pleasure so the mental fabrications are uh, not anything else but the previous qualities uh, you experience namely rapture and pleasure so you know them exactly as they are so there is kind of knowledge arising right now of course in in previous stages too this knowledge has been uh, uh, you know there but you slowly go into details of the knowledge that's why you recognize each of these mental states as they are so now you experience those mental fabrication which means you have a knowledge you have a jnana it means you uh, slowly but firmly cultivating morality concentration and wisdom in pali sila samadhi and panya in the eight stages he trains thus i breathe in calming down mental fabrication he trains thus i breathe out calming down mental fabrication so it when in and out breathing happens what next the meditator takes into consideration is of course mental fabrication but in that the meditator uh, does calm in down them which means the mental fabrication uh, both rapture and pleasure as uh, have uh, their very uh, initial stage and experience it thoroughly now you, the meditator calms them down because there is enough enjoyment in it from vipassana point of view at this stage the meditator uh, you know go goes away from this mental fabrication it doesn't say that we uh, the meditator completely leave these things uh, aside but uh, knowing the reality of rapture and pleasure the meditator move forward to experience, uh, to experience something uh, so uh, next stage we have this uh, 
uh, said clearly he phrased thus i breathe in experiencing the mind earlier you had calming down the bodily fabrica uh, mental fabrication uh, which means rapture and pleasure or feeling and sensation now the meditator realize that uh, these mental fabrications rapture and pleasure are mental state of the mind so he is prominent focus now slowly directing to the mind so now uh, while in breath and out breath takes place in the background of his mind he focus focuses the mind experiencing experience the mind so that's what happened in this stage um let me tell you that this 9 10 11 12 stages are uh, consisting of the third foundation of mindfulness so i will show you those uh, slides one after the other then you can realize how anapanasati stages are uh, completing the four foundation of mindfulness so we are in the third foundation of mindfulness so we talk about the uh, the tenth uh, stages uh, tenth stage he trains thus i breathe in gladdening the mind he trains thus i breathe out gladdening the mind so in and out breathing happens as usual but his prominent focus is uh, gladdening the mind focus is there with the mind but quality of mind is he make it happy he make it joy that's what happen imagine how wonderful this meditation is if you go from uh, stages to stages with instruction you can do it buddha did not tell that this is only for monks and nuns it can be practiced by anybody else so it's very scientific too because um from stage 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 you can experience those stages so do it every day then you can feel it the stages 11 in the stages of 11 um uh, the meditator uh understand the mind has concentrated he i breathe in concentrating the mind i breathe out concentrate in the mind samahitam kittam asasisami iti sikkati pasasisami iti sikkati while in breath and out breath is uh, constantly happening his mind is concentrated uh, concentrated and it is well, well aware of by the meditator now the uh, 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 next stage i breathe in releasing the mind i breathe out releasing the mind it's a kind of uh, point where the meditator uh, move forward because uh, he feels that the mind has these previous three stages when in breath and out breath happens experience in the mind gladdening the mind concentrate in the mind so he has enough experiences to know what mind is and he therefore he now releases his mind from this stage which means he goes to the next stage look at the next stage uh, it says that he trains thus i breathe in focusing on impermanence he trains thus i breathe out focusing on impermanence now he moves from his mind uh, he moves his attention from mind to the uh, impermanence of his mind this is interesting because a lot of people understand that uh, the meditation on in and out breathing just to feel happy and relax that's all no it is a channel that we use uh, to understand everything in our body and mind everything in the world uh, out of this body so here it says clearly that i breathe in focusing on impermanence in impermanence of what impermanence of the very breath impermanence of the bo- physical body impermanence of each and every mental states we ex- we talk about pre- uh, previously i capture pleasure and bodily formation mental formation and concentration gladdening and all these mental and physical status are subject to impermanence now meditator experience that 
how throughout the meditation session from the very beginning to the uh, uh, mental state he is having now he sees or she sees that nothing is permanent through experience so his focus or her focus now is uh, the impermanence while breathing in and out because it's a constant occurrence in our body so it happens always nobody stop it and don't try to stop it uh, it happens always what is important is through that breathing we want to see what is happening in the body and mind now the meditator found that the body and mind everything every other details features of the body and mind are impermanent that's very important when the meditator experiences the impermanence uh, another thing is happening there that is dispassion <coughs> dispassion we talk about that last week dispassion is the uh, oppo opposing quality of passion passion is always uh, going with uh, greed or attachment but dispassion is the opposite of it when there is dispassion uh, the pali word viraga there is release from attachment so the meditator when he uh, after seeing the impermanence as it is um, focus attention to dispassion when in and out breathing happen so next as i said uh, focus on cessation focus on cessation when uh, breathing out and breathing in so uh, uh we have to address so many things here but for the moment this is enough to understand the state itself that the meditator focus uh the cessation when there is dispassion there is no anything else but cessation when you see impermanence of anything even out of meditation you don't want to attach to it you don't want to keep it because the that is impermanence when uh, therefore dispassion is there viraga is there when there is viraga you don't go to uh, take it you don't want to keep it you don't attach to it so that's what happened when there is cessation therefore there is relinquishment which mean patinissagga uh, i breathe in focusing on relinquishment i breathe out focusing on relinqu relinquishment Relinqu relinquishment is a big word but simple meaning of it is that you completely go away from it letting go of is happening completely there it start when you realize that the, the impact theory of impermanence of your breath of your feelings and sensation but it completes that at this stage so these are the 16 stages stages so far anapanasati in it you have 32 stages that's the way, place where we uh, stopped last week. I think this is enough uh, as, a, as a summary of what we discussed last week. Now we are going to discuss how these 16 uh, stages of Anapan Sati develop the four foundation of mindfulness. Uh, that's what uh, the Sutta itself uh, discuss. I, will, I would like to tell you how it explaining the discourse and how because does mindfulness of breathing develops and cultivated uh, fulfill the four foundation of mindfulness that's the question buddha put forward himself and he's answering because on whatever occasion a bhikkhu breathing in long understand i breathe in long or breathing out long understand i breathe out long breathing in short understand i breathe in short or breathing out short understand i breathe out short train thus i shall uh, you know go on like this you can see on uh, on the screen that how these four stages first four stages i explain on that occasion so when the meditator understand four stages as they are through his practice at that moment that particular bhikkhu or bhikkhuni or lay person who does meditation on anapanasati abide 
abides contemplating the body as a body, ardent, fully aware and mindful, having put, put away covetousness and grief for the world. I say that this is a certain body among the bodies, namely inbred, uh, in, inbreeding and outbreeding. This is why on that occasion a bhikkhu abides contemplating the body as a body, ardent, fully aware and mindful, having put away covetousness and grief for the world. So this is the statement uh, made by the Buddha in the discourse. So what does it mean exactly is, uh, let me get the uh, slide. So. Uh, for first four stages of anapanasati uh, can take the meditator into completion of the uh, uh, the first foundation of four foundation because it it talks about look at you can see that it talks about the breadth uh, the the features of the breadth long short and how it becomes sensitive and how it becomes calming down and it's all about the breath as well as the body so when a meditator is completing this part buddha says in that statement that he develops the mindfulness of the body which means he or his or her attention is not anywhere else but focus the whole body um, there is no way for you to ask questions. That's, I'm sorry about that because that's how the uh, this uh, system is working. Uh, uh, mindfulness of the body is the first foundation of four foundation of mindfulness. The Pali word we use for uh, mindfulness of the body is Kaya Nupasana. So your attention is centered within the fathom long body with the focus, the breath in such a way in the four uh, stages of Anapanasati. So when the meditator is completing these four uh, or single uh, eight factors, eight ways of looking, he complete or she completes mindfulness of the body. As you can see, the fir first foundation of mindfulness. Uh, according to the discourse, let me get the discourse again. Uh, according to the discourse, because on whatever occasion a bhikkhu trains thus, those four, I shall breathe in, uh, you know, the Buddha talks about the other foundation. Uh, uh, whenever bhikkhu completes the four, first four, his mind goes to develop the first foundation of mindfulness and kaya means uh, the body means here in breathing and out breathing so that's what uh, we need to understand here uh, so whole physical body is fully aware by the meditator as a result, as a result, uh, he has some knowledge just now, like uh, knowing the entire body, knowing the uh, nature of uh, the body itself, uh, and also the breath. Therefore, as we discuss in fifth and sixth stages with rapture and pleasure, he is going to develop mindfulness factor of enlightenment. So simply say that, just forget about these technical words as well as uh, philosophical way of explaining this. We, let's think about in a simple way. When you watch your in-breath and out-breath, you feel your body, you feel uh, your breath without any problem. Like uh, as a cycle of uh, in-breath and out-breath, you feel that it's one and you feel it's so calming. At this moment, the meditator uh, feels that this is so refreshing and, and the happiness there is so important for this person. Therefore, his mindfulness becomes an enlightenment factor. 
Now, this mindfulness factor of enlightenment is appeared to the meditator uh, uh, because of the development of his morality, concentration and wisdom. I, I tell you that uh, these words, train and understand has a significant difference as are there. When the meditator is aware of in-breath and out-breath exactly as it is, um, a kind of knowledge is arising there in his mind that is uh, knowledge about morality, concentration and wisdom. That's why training is happening there. With this training, mindfulness factor of enlightenment become prominent and the meditator realized that this is something that Nibbana uh, gives me. Nibbana is coming to me because of this factor. So mindfulness factor of enlightenment is manifested uh, uh, and meditator is further investigating on it because training makes the meditator be aware of uh, become aware of other spiritual factor. When the mindfulness factor of enlightenment is clearly visible, the meditator, if he or she further investigates on it, uh, the, uh, another factor of enlightenment is arising, that is investigation. Investigation factor of enlightenment is called in... Uh, 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 call in uh, eightfold path as samadhi, the right understanding. So mindfulness factor of enlightenment, investigation, uh, investigation factor of enlightenment are developing together. But uh, you feel it as a, a secondly because mindfulness should be there to realize what investigation factor is. With, with the support of investigation factor of mindfulness, you strengthen mindfulness factor of enlightenment. Similarly, at the same time, there is another factor developed there that is perseverance factor of enlightenment. Um, then with these three, uh, the other qualities are being developed into a greater extent. Uh, let me tell you um, uh, something out of the discourse. Uh, in Mahachattari Sakha Sutta, uh, the hundred and, um, as I remember, um, 16 of Majjhima there is a sutta called Great 40. In that discourse, Buddha says that mindfulness, investigation, perseverance. And from other words, samadhi, right understanding, uh, right effort, and right mindfulness. Um, come together to develop all the spiritual qualities. Therefore, these three factors are prominent, important qualities for someone to get enlightenment. So in this um, level of Anapanasati meditation, the meditator understand these three factors of enlightenment as they are and know how powerful they are to gain the other spiritual qualities in the Anapanasati. As a, uh, soon after completing the, these three factors, not fully but into certain extent, rapture factor of enlightenment arising, ari arises. Rapture factor, because we talk about this rapture factor in Anapanasati stages, not in this list, but in, in fifth and sixth stages but through this practice you can cross over to the other stages of Anapanasati as well. Let me repeat that again. Uh, it is enough for a meditator to uh, begin his long practice of experiencing all these spiritual qualities from breathing in long breathing out and, and understanding these. Because um, you are there, breathing in long, breathing out long happens and you understand it. Uh, that There you have mental faculties, there you have feelings, perception and other spiritual qualities. So in order to explain the stages Buddha, uh, explain one after the other, but when it is being practiced, it comes together. So in these four stages, you can cross over 
uh, anapan to the four foundation of mindfulness then to the seven factors of enlightenment so mindfulness of the body uh, as soon as it's complete it cultivates the seven factors of enlightenment we have been discussing so far only four because of these three rapture is coming then when there is rapture you feel tranquility factor tranquility is a very uh, good quality that we all should experience uh, for instance a uh, situation like this could be a tranquility moment suppose that a baby uh, is on the is on the cradle and uh, you swing the cradle from this side to that side so suppose that you were in a cradle and somebody is swing from this side to that side so what you feel is so relaxed and a kind of a strange feeling uh, coming and going in the body so similarly when there is tranquility <coughs> you feel a refreshing body let me bring you another example to realize what tranquility is suppose that you work so hard and you are tired and uh, your body your clothes get wet and uh, you came uh, now you come home and have a bath as soon as you have a bath you eat some uh, delicious food and uh, drink enough water and finish that and come to uh, the veranda where you can uh, sit down comfortably in a big uh, uh, chair and you experience uh, a kind of peace and happiness of the body and mind that state of both physical and mental uh, uh, you know relaxation uh, is quite similar to tranquility factor of enlightenment it's all the what i gave you is an only uh, is on uh, is an example but uh, tranquility factor of uh, the four uh, for seven factors of enlightenment is something like this when the meditator experiences tranquility it creates concentration without that physical and mental relaxation samadhi is not coming samadhi is one pointed samadhi is uh, in that state your mind is not bothered by anything whether you lose your belongings whether you uh, are faced by somebody else whether you are scolded at you are undisturbed by or anything of this because your mind is concentrated it means you are your mind stays in peace and happiness concentration factor of enlightenment slowly uh, uh, support the uh, the last factor of seven factors of enlightenment equanimity equanimity is mostly wisdom uh, equanimity or equilibrium of the mind is coming out of all these factors starting from mindfulness investigation perseverance rapture tranquility and concentration so you can see how each of the seven factors of um, of mindfulness support each other to uh, to get the other uh, next one so that's how these seven factors of enlightenment are developed by the contemplation on um, the body by the mindfulness of the body uh, as said in the discourse when the seven factors of enlightenment are developed uh, into a greater strength uh, and two qualities are being uh, manifested by the uh, meditator from an another words when the meditator realizes that mindfulness is strong uh, invest therefore investigation is there without investigation mindfulness is not uh, there mindfulness is there into certain level level but it it does not become an enlightenment factor without the clear investigation without the without the quality of investigation the quality of investigation is not there without perseverance let me explain you this again um 
in order to become mindful about cooking in order to become mindful about uh, cleaning the house and then pay particular attention to particular thing we do we should have some wisdom we should have some knowledge so in the faculty of in the factor of investigation we have it so if you do not have any energy in it how can investigation and also mindfulness uh, you know stand there so in order to pay attention to a particular thing we should have wisdom and also we should have some effort that's how the three uh, seven uh, factors of enlightenment come together as a result of that there is rapture suppose that you uh, become mindful and uh, after thinking wisely and you put your effort into that and you clean the house after cleaning the house there is a happiness there is a pleasure because you did it you did it with right intention you did it with happiness you did it with wisdom so rapture is there after and of course with the rapture and you 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 have tranquilized mind your mind is so calm and peaceful at the same time concentration is there you can focus some your studies uh, and then you can uh, focus your mind to something you want without any disturbance that's samadhi so at some point you feel that that anything happened to you anything happened to this uh, clean area uh, would not be a uh, suffering to you so i was trying to explain you the seven factors of enlightenment with a simple uh, uh, example but the the real factors of enlightenment when they develop in nana panasati is uh, so profound and also uh, deep that's why buddha says in the discourse that there are two important qualities appear in the meditator's mind i want to tell you that by meditating on nana panasati for uh, for an hour or so you cannot have it if it is have if it is coming it's uh, strange as well as uh, uh, very interesting uh, those who have been doing meditation for for love, for many years many many lifetime could uh, get, uh, get it but uh, for someone who meditates only for the first time i don't think that they can experience the anapana sati into this level but um, you may realize that how these things happen and perhaps you can experience it in your daily meditation okay now let's come to this um, uh, slide now so by culminating the seven factors of enlightenment you will have a great knowledge knowledge about these seven factors of enlightenment the uh, knowledge about each factor of enlightenment individually as well as collectively so knowledge about impermanence i want to tell you that at this stage the meditator has gone beyond the theory of impermanence and suffering because he has done that exercise during this period though it is coming in the last uh, stages of anapanasati he or she has Uh, somehow experience that during uh, these uh, four found first foundation of mindfulness as well as seven foundation of uh, seven factors of enlightenment because there is the factor of investigation as well as equanimity uh, when you have the fac faculty of investigation in your concentration what does you investigate whether uh, that is whether this is permanent whether this is uh, impermanent whether this is happy whether this is uh, giving us suffering and that investigation is there therefore the meditator of course um, touches uh, those level of uh, impermanent suffering and non self that's why knowledge is completing there uh, simply the knowledge is coming uh, when uh, because of the completion of the seven factors of enlightenment with the knowledge there is release or vimukti liberation is there 
when there is knowledge that this is impermanent this is suffering uh, and and when they are, when this is impermanent there couldn't be any permanent entity in that so you want to release uh, from there you want you do not want to attach to it you do not want to get it you do not want to crave for that so release is happening there there is a knowledge again i am saying it again there is a knowledge that this computer uh, and this table this lamp this building is subject to impermanence it never exist uh, in that form uh, and it it's going to change so when you realize something you attracted is going to change i don't believe that anybody is going to take it as my my own and this is mine this is me and so on because no there is no point to do it, do that uh, so knowledge is there that this is impermanent then uh, he or she wants to go away from that that's what happened here when you develops the seven factors of enlightenment uh, together uh, with the support of for foundation of mindfulness uh, there is knowledge and release with the completion of knowledge uh, there is the most important thing the meditator and needs to you know absorb or experience that is nibbana so nibbana is uh, not anything else but the ex absence of greed hatred and ignorance absence of difficult thoughts absence of unwholesome thought look at the map the buddha explain uh, from mundane world to super mundane or oh, look at the directions would the uh, discover from typical lifestyles to a, a super supreme lifestyle so you can see in the screen that when the breathing meditation takes place from the very beginning if it is developed truly with the, in accordance with the practice it brings you so many good results like what those results are not anything else but mental discipline so when we, when i look at the overall map here i can see how the morality is being developed by the meditator and the factor of uh, concentration or the aggregate of con concentration is being developed by the meditator and finally the wisdom aggregate is being developed by the meditator culminating knowledge and release uh, uh, and nibbana so this is exactly what the buddha explained in anabhan sati sutta we can understand this if we go to the second tetra this is the first tetra uh, uh, in the first tetra we have uh, eight sing, uh, sing, uh, single stages of anabhan sati and also uh, four uh, couples uh, stages of anabhan sati all together there are eight or four in the first tetra we focus to develop mindfulness of the body and through that we develop the four found, uh, seven factors of enlightenment and uh, develop in these seven complete uh, knowledge and release and that's nibbana let's go to the second tetra this is the second tetra uh, we discussed that rapture uh, pleasure mental fabric experiencing mental fabrications and calming down mental fabrication happens there let's take a few seconds to recall what we discussed there we experience our prominent focus is not anything else but uh, the rapture pleasure mental fabrication in this category uh, sometimes this may be strange for you Uh, but it is the truth in nana pana sati uh, we do not hang on to breath though it is called ana pana sati meditation we do not hang on to it during the meditation we use it as raft you remember the simile of raft in alagad dupama sutta it says that we use the raft just to cross over the river to go to the other shore after crossing over we do not carry it on our shoulder 
and go wherever we go. We leave it in the show and we go our journey. Similarly, we use the breath in Nanapana Sati meditation to calm down our mind, to relax our body, to bring our wandering mind into a focus. So in the first tetra or in the first four stages or eight, eight stages, we did, we did that. We were able to bring our mind, wandering mind, mind into focus. When it comes to a particular focus, our mind and body gives uh, give results. The, what are the results? Body and mind, uh, you know, themselves uh, bring forward rapture, pleasure, and experiencing mental fabrication and calming down mental fabrication. These are the prominent qualities our mind associates now. Therefore, we call these uh, stages or this second tetra is developing the second foundation of mindfulness uh, basically that is uh, mindfulness of feeling the Pali word is Vedana Nupasana so Vedana Nupasana or the mindfulness of feelings is developed as a result of uh, uh, development of these uh, eight or four or uh, four stages. So when the meditator realizes that this is nothing but the mindfulness of feelings, uh, he slowly he or his or her mind is focusing the mindfulness factor, uh, mindfulness factor of enlightenment. Again, as similar to the uh, previous slide that develops uh, seven factors of enlightenment through the support of mindfulness of the body here same thing happens when mindfulness of feeling feelings are you know, aware uh, the meditator develop that particular mindfulness as an enlightenment factor um, i assume that you have a question why uh, the same mindfulness uh, is being repeated here you can see mindfulness of feeling here you can see mindfulness factor of enlightenment yes there is a difference here you understand feeling as they are like pleasant feeling unpleasant feeling neutral feeling and so on but uh, at this stage when it becomes an enlightenment factor of mindfulness you uh, mm, complete that uh, observation with the support of wisdom and other factors and it clearly gives an idea that it brings release knowledge and Nibbana that's how it becomes enlightenment factor so similarly uh, you develop investigation factor of enlightenment then perseverance factor of enlightenment of course uh, when you come to mindfulness of feelings, you have all these faculties develop simultaneously, but the meditator needs to understand them individually as well as together. Meditator is required to understand those factors of enlightenment individually as well as together. That's, that's knowledge should be there. So, as said uh, in the beginning, uh, in the first foundation of mindfulness, we have these factors of enlightenment appear in the mind, appear in the knowledge. So, again, completion of the seven factors of enlightenment here uh, brings you uh, uh, knowledge and uh, liberation or release and there is Nibbana. So, now... Uh, you develop the the second um, foundation of or foundation of mindfulness and it directs to develop the first seven factors of enlightenment and brings the results. So let's go to the third tetra. Uh, he trains the I breathing experience in the mind. It also does the same thing. Uh, uh, this is the third tetra of uh, Anapanasati and it mainly focuses the mindfulness of mind. I don't know whether you can see this small 
arrow and in it I have written mindfulness of the mind. So it means the third foundation of mindfulness, Chittanupasana. Chittanupasana is being developed in Anapanasati when the meditator focus his mind. And then uh, uh, similar to the other foundations, uh, you can develop mindfulness factor of enlightenment, mindfulness, uh, mindfulness factor of enlightenment, investigation factor of enlightenment, perseverance factor of enlightenment, and rapture factor of enlightenment, uh, next tranquility factor of enlightenment, then uh, concentration factor of enlightenment, finally equanimity factor of enlightenment. So when the meditator is aware of his or her mind which is concentrated, um, there is an ability to clearly see uh, seeing these mindfulness investigation perseverance rapture tranquility concentration and equanimity one after the other and they become a force they become a power together to develop knowledge and release where nibbana is complete uh, come to an end come to a accomplishment come to a, a complete uh, practice so this is Chittanupasana or the third foundation of mindfulness. Buddha in the uh, in Anapanasati discourse clearly explained that that the fourth tetra, which means the four fourth foundation of mindfulness, um, uh, is also important because in this factor, impermanence, dispassion, cessation, relinquishment are not anything else but mental state or the uh, thoughts so impermanence is an idea uh, for example we say that this uh, car is subject to impermanence so the car becomes uh, old slowly and uh, uh, the uh, parts of the car could not be uh, used anymore so it has its own nature but understanding the car is becoming old and the parts are going to unusable are, are ideas, opinions or so seeing the external thing from your senses, you decide it. So that's idea. So this is impermanent is an idea. So it is ideas are always in the mind. So uh, Earlier we talk about Chittanupasana, mindfulness of the mind, so it's mind and whatever mind produce are called thought, idea, so impermanent is an idea which is positive. It doesn't uh, come automatically but through wisdom we can see it. So mindfulness of Dhamma therefore uh, is coming here as the foundation of mindfulness. So the, when the meditator develops the last um, eight stages, sing, sing, uh, single stages of Anapanasati, he or she develops the mindfulness of Dhamma, mindfulness of phenomena. As a completion of mindfulness of Dhamma, he or she develops the same uh, seven factors of enlightenment, namely mindfulness, investigation, perseverance, rapture, tranquility, concentration, and equanimity. As you know, uh, completion of these seven factors of enlightenment brings you the results that is release and uh, uh, knowledge and release. When the knowledge and release are there, there is Nibbana. This is how Buddha explained the uh, Anapan Sati uh, with its fullest results uh, in this discourse. There is no other discourse that has complete account of Anapanasati like this. Therefore, this Anapanasati discourse is so important. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, um, receive your questions right now. I cannot hear you, but you can hear me well. So you can um, write down questions if you have and uh, send it to me for answers. If you have any, if you need any clarification, if you had any difficult point to understand please note them down and send it to me i try my best to answer these questions 
having said that i would like to show you how this meditation uh, you know progress with stages you know we technically understand the 32 single stages of anapanasati and uh, 16 stages of anapanasati and we divided these 16 stages into four tetra then we see how each tetra develop one foundation of mindfulness mainly and how other three foundations hiddenly develop in that foundation then they develop the seven factors of enlightenment culminating knowledge and vision and nibbana but still there are certain things to understand let me bring you into that level by explaining progressive stages of anapanasati i think you can see the slide now and the here we do a kind of meditation on basic breath you can remember uh, the four uh, um, stages of anapanasati meditation first long uh, in breath long out breath short in breath short out breath then sensitive to entire body when in breath and out breath happens then while in breath and out breath takes place you calm down the bodily fabrication those are the basic meditation so in that first tetra the stay uh, the progress happen and we are in basic breath meditation so next progressive stage of anapanasati is the breath meditation as satipatta right in the for in the first uh, uh, eight single stages and uh, four main stages over in the first tetra we develop the breath meditation by complete practice of that breath meditation take us to establishing mindfulness on satipatta so uh, in the, the second third and fourth tetra we develop mainly uh, foundation of the feelings foundation of mind foundation of dhamma T uh, let me tell you again when you practice first tetra second tetra third tetra and fourth tetra you develop satipattana establishing mindfulness on four foundation of mindfulness anapana uh, means in breath and out breath by focusing in breath and out breath at the end we develop the four foundation of mindfulness that is that is the second stay progressive stage of anapanasati third progressive stage of anapanasati is applying satipattana to the awakening factors that's what we discuss with the seven factors of enlightenment so we apply that satipattana to develop awakening factors that's what uh, the meditator does there when he or she comes to one particular foundation of mindfulness so that's the third stages of uh, anabhanasati there is uh, there is a fourth uh, stages as well that's the attainment of true knowledge and liberation the fourth stage uh, of anabhanasati is to bring the meditator's focus is to complete the knowledge and liberation you do not want to worry about gaining these uh, stages of anapanasati um, with so much effort, effort because uh, if you do if you do the previous one the uh, the the uh, success uh, successive stage is coming automatically automatically let me repeat that again uh, if you do the basic breath meditation exactly as the discourse says you do not want to worry about the second stage it comes as a result uh, with the completion of the second stage a stage the third comes as a result and consequently the fourth one liberation knowledge and liberation the final progress, progressive stage of anapanasati is nibbana so if you come to this level nibbana you are you are the near you are near the door of nibbana and you can feel it and you complete it so that's those are the progressive stage of anapanasati that's what we discuss in the whole 
uh, stages of anapanasati um now i would like to move on to the practical way of anapanasati uh, the discourse is saying something like we uh, like we had now but it may not be easy for us to cultivate it exactly how discourse explains so we need to look at how it it's been developed in daily practices so you can see uh, how uh, people should start meditation i can uh, i have added here uh, two pictures one is uh, uh, with the sitting posture and the other one sitting of course a sitting posture but on a chair so you can see how the body is straight focused so scan the body for being in the present moment the first thing you need to do in anapanasati meditation is being aware uh, uh, of the posture you need to be aware of the posture uh, not from uh, front side but every directions back and side and just like somebody else is looking at your body from each side you yourself do it for a better understanding of the posture having done that uh, having done that bodily scanning uh, mindfulness practice on in and out breathing should be started um, i have uh, uh, broken this practice into four section in the first section we apply a counting method why do i explain this counting method here because it is uh, easy for many people to do if you do not have such practice and uh, feel that it is not uh, familiar to me it's up to you to forget it but as an explanation i would like to tell that the counting method is famous in in today's world i have seen that many teachers use this method with uh, beginners to anapanasati meditation of course beginners to any type of meditation so i would like to tell it to you exactly how it happens it is up to you to decide whether i follow this method or just usual method it's fine if the results of anapanasati comes no matter what method you use the important thing is good result um first bring your attention to the focus on the breath first thing of course you need to bring your attention to the breast breath when you focus it leave it happen naturally we have explained this before but i'm repeating leave it happen naturally then because if you tie it and if you really focus it you don't know your muscles of the jaw of the whole body become tight because uh, that happens naturally so leave it uh to happen naturally and uh, feel that the breath as it is so now start counting breathe in breathe out count count one breathe in breathe out count two breathe in breathe out count three continue this uh, counting until you go to number 10 and when you go uh, go to number 10 come down uh, not from 1 to 2 uh, 2 to 3 but uh, 10 to 9 your uh, 9 to 8 8 to 7 and ascending and descending order uh, let me explain you this again uh, you breathe in breathe out one breathe in breathe out two but this is not a intentional breathing because it is a natural process and leave it happen naturally gentle way and whenever breathing in breath and out breath ends one cycle just count one so we go to 10 and when uh, next time we where you breathe in breathe out count nine so you come down it is said in the commentaries of course latest commentaries uh, because this method is been has been explained um, uh, uh, very late uh, where in in 21st century so <clears throat> um when you feel that you count from 1 to 
and tend to won a game without any break of attention, it's a sign of concentration. It's a sign of, uh, you know, my, the mind has stopped wandering into memories, into objects and so on, because your counting uh, does not break. Your counting was undisturbed. But if something happened to your counting, sometimes, you know, a lot of people say that we cannot count up to five because our attention breaks. Of course, it happens. You feel that counting does not work and a lot of people struggle. Though it is uh, from one to ten and ten to one back, uh, seems simple, but it does not happen because you should go with in breath and out breath, in breath and out breath. However, if you break your attention and forget about counting somewhere in the middle, just start from one again. Do not uh, start from where you stop. Of course, you cannot remember where you stop, uh, where you stop when you forget it. So come down to one again and start counting in breath and out breath again. But need to be careful that counting is not the prominent focus of this method. Sometimes people mistakenly take it that counting is uh, the most important factor. No. Counting is a supportive uh, factor for us to gain concentration uh, but the breath is the prominent focus here. I think that's uh, enough uh, to begin counting method. Then in the second <coughs> Uh, section of counting method, we slightly change um, the focus. Uh, it, it seems similar to the previous uh, section one, but with subtle changes in emphasis. This time we count before the in breath. Earlier we count uh, after the breath. Uh, let me bring your attention again. Breathe in, breathe out one. Breathe in, breathe out too. That's what we did in the first section. Now we change the emphasis before, or oh, we change uh, counting at the end of uh, the breath, in breath and out breath, uh, from uh, to the beginning. Uh, so now we count one and breathe in, breathe out. When the natural in breath and out breath happens, uh, leave it happens but in the second stage your counting is coming before that that's what happened in the second stage you can see in uh, that in the uh, uh, powerpoint count one breathe in breathe out count two breathe in breathe out three breathe in breathe out uh, continue this up to ten and uh, come down to nine eight and so on if you break your attention and forget counting, just come to one again and start again. That's the second uh, stage. In the third stage section, um, we drop the counting. So in the first and second section, we uh, use the counting method uh, with uh, changing emphasis on it. Uh, but now, in section 3, we drop the counting method. We don't do the counting method, but stay with the breath at the, as it moves. Like, uh, I th as I know, this stay, uh, section 3 is somewhere in the third and fourth uh, uh, stages of Anabhanasati. In the third and fourth stages of Anabhanasati, we encounter that we are sensitive to entire body and we calm down the bodily fabrication. It is exactly the same thing happens here. We stop counting because we are mindful about in-breath and out-breath. In order to become mindful of in-breath and out-breath, we use the counting and when it is happened, we don't need the counting anymore. Now we are mindful. So we stop counting but be mindful about the breath. It's an exactly as it is. So ensuring that we are breathing in a regular, unforced way, again we, breathe, we see the in-breath and out-breath. 
it's another uh, level of uh, in increased uh, medit mindfulness uh, so that's what happened in the section 3 in the section 4 what we do is uh, continue that attention to in breath and out breath uh, let me read you this uh, this statement in this section our attention continues to focus on the in breath and the out breath but we only focus on the in breath at the precise point we have identified uh, don't be tempted to follow the passages of the breath through the body remain focused on the inhalation and exhalation of your gentle normal breathing at the point of contact what does it mean it says so, a few things in this section 4 uh, our attention continues to focus in, in breath and out breath which is uh, easy to understand we focus the both in breath and out breath um, but our focus um, is happening putting our attention into one particular place it means that um, we feel in breath and out breath somewhere tip of the nostril or uh, at the edge of lips some people use to focus the abdomen the vibration of the abdomen I don't think there is any wrong with that some uh, used to focus wherever you like but the important thing is that you focus that place in order to um, focus the breath um, but uh, we should not move our attention from that focal focal point suppose for example suppose that you focus the tip of the nose just to uh, investigate the in breath and out breath don't follow the breath into the lungs sometimes people do it we is you assume that breathe uh, the in breath is coming for at least couple of inches uh, 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 in front of your nostril and imagine that it comes and touch the nostril and we follow the breath into the no uh, nose and also uh, the lungs and we tra travel behind we tail the our attention um, you know go goes behind that breath so don't do it because your mind make makes a habit to follow everything else not only the breath but also the sounds and pictures taste different feeling so we are here in this meditations to um, end all these habitual patterns of the of our mind so we don't need to make another habit uh, in this meditation by going behind the breath so don't be tempted to follow the passage of the breath through the body so keep the attention near the nostril that's it uh, remain focus on the inhalation and exhalation of your gentle normal breathing at the point of contact so keep it here so in the section 4 in breath uh, and out breath happens and you experience it these are the four uh, sections uh, that I would like to tell and this is a picture how a child of one of my friends meditate on the beach. Uh, I show it to you because uh, it's fascinating and we like it. Uh, so in order to discover inner peace through Anapanasati meditation we need to work on that. The last um, I know practical way of meditating on in and out breathing is for you uh, the fourth uh, section section in section one we count uh, after the one cycle of breath and that counting goes from one to ten and ten uh, again uh, we uh, come down from ten to one and the sec section two we count before the one cycle uh, up to 10 and uh, then come down from 10 to 1 in the section 3 we stop counting but focus the both breath and third uh, section we uh, uh, strengthen that focus actually these four sections uh, are, are explained in the first tetra uh, 
in other words these four counting comes uh, in the four stages of ana panasati if you follow this uh, peace is inevitable it is coming to you it is guaranteed by the buddha so uh, uh, meditate at least for couple of minutes every day and slowly your practice become uh, fruitful so uh, i think uh, that's the end of the discussion today unfortunately there is no time for us to uh, discuss your questions and inquiries but you can have time to write them down and uh, send them in emails i i try my best to answer before the next meeting uh, on next thursday uh, thank you very much for listening carefully uh, and I, i wish you you have time to meditate on ana ana pan or in ana breathing every day remember what the buddha said about ana pan sati it is it is the dwelling dwelling of the buddha uh, whenever he uh, did not do any typical things for him uh, for tathagata for the buddha he stays uh, in uh, ana pan sati concentration again he develop ana pan sati concentration of course the buddha has developed into highest extent but he experienced that bliss of ana pan that's bliss from ana pan sati therefore it's called um, tathagata viharana so ana pan sati is the dwelling of the all buddhas and he says that that is the divine dwelling if you develop ana pan sati and achieve peace and happiness that is quite similar to the happiness of divine being and it is the noble dwelling as well so you know what ignoble dwellings ignoble de- dwelling is living with uh, you know mundane things that experience through sense uh, senses but uh, if you develop me- this meditation and achieve concentration that's called noble living so i i bless you to have that noble dwelling divine dwelling as well as tathagata dwelling dwellings through your practice Thank you for listening carefully. Uh, may you be well, happy, and peaceful uh, until we meet next Thursday, uh, not through uh, live streaming, uh, but at the temple. I wish you all the blessings. Uh, again, I would like to invite our friends uh, and devotees who join with us live stream. Continue to uh, join with us and enrich your practice and try to at least to attain. to a certain level of enlightenment in this very lifetime so that's the end of the discussion of uh, ana pan sati sutta you will have a new uh, sutta which is related to this uh, uh, these qualities we discuss uh, and uh, you will get it very soon thank you very much once again may you be well happy and peaceful let me recite and uh, stanza to conclude this online session शब्दीतो विवाज शब्दोग विनाशत माते भवरा सुखी दीगायुको भव शब्दमंगलाखंगता शब्दुद्धा सदा सुति भवंतुते सबदेवता सबदमानुभावेन सदा सुति भवंतुते भवतु सब मंगल रक्कंतु सब देवता सब संगानुभावेन सदा सुति भवंतुते May you be well, happy, and peaceful. Thank you.